can hit record um, and we'll, we'll go from there. And I'll just cut it down a bit afterwards. So to start with, guys, can you tell me how you both know each other? Well, George? Oh, we met in a, a lovely place called Stafford College. Um, uh, yeah, Nico was just sitting in a corner. I was like, yo, I know you um, from, from a friend. And I was like, you seem like a cool guy. And then here we are, like, what, five years down the line? So, yeah. yeah. And he's not a cool crap. guy anymore. Yeah, no, not cool. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. So, that's, that's I think there's always two, two sides to a romance. So... Nico, how did you meet George? So I was just sat down in a corner and then this like measly looking kid, he sort of came over and started just talking to me. I thought he was a bit of a weirdo, but I decided to um, like at least talk back, see what he wanted to say. And um, yeah, he actually ended up being um, an okay guy. And five years later, we lived together. Mm. One second. Oh, oh, yeah, wait for it. Hey, mate, how you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Oh, yeah, there we go. Nico, stay there. Stay there. I'm going to... Imagine you just turned up right behind. How much would that be, right? And our old teacher lives with us as well. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Amazing. Yeah, go away, man. Thank I'm going to edit that and appear in, George, in Nico's chair. You realise that, right? Oh, yeah, that'd be great. I could have yeah, you are. yeah, you can do like Zoom backgrounds, right? Where you can, you can change it. You can use his background. Perfect, yeah. I'll just sit in, sit in his <laughs> area. <laughs> Perfect. So you guys live together now, five years down the line from being at college together. Um, so what is it that you guys do for people that don't know? Nico, you... Oh, <laughs> so we make videos on YouTube. Um, so we basically uh, think of an idea, whether it's a prank or um, just something we can build a story around. And, um, and then, yeah, we, we make a video on it. So there's, there's situations where we've gone to like EDL marches, um, some pretty risky scenarios. And we just basically try and make the best story which we, which we possibly can. And then, yeah. It tries to be funny, basically, on YouTube. That's basically but I try my best, but sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Mm-hmm. So you're the face of the operation in this, Nico. In many respects, George, what's what do you what do you do? What do you bring to the party? Oh well, Nico's the face, and I'm the brains behind the entire operation. <laughs> I run the whole show. Um, Nico would be nowhere without me. So yeah. <laughs> no, I, I basically um, uh, Nico does a lot of the planning, planning for the videos, comes up with the ideas, the brainstorms. Um, I'll film it. Obviously, he's on camera, and then my main. My main role is filming and then editing the videos. So. Okay, cool. So obviously, George got best editor in Stafford College. I did. Uh, uh, yeah, he did. So I saw that and I was like, I need to employ this guy to start editing my videos. And that's what happened. Yeah. But, and very well deserved, George. I'll, I'll add that. And still to this day, he still do some great edits. Much appreciated. Have you got a certificate up in the background anywhere? Uh, it's, it's, in, it's in my like, secret drawer of like, favourite things I've ever received. So, yeah. Um, so, in terms of your success on YouTube, how's that going? Like, how many subscribers have you got? And what does that really mean? Like, what does that equate to for you guys? So, we, um, we've got 2 million, um, 2 million subscribers at this current moment um and subscribers like uh, that's basically like how many people decide to actually subscribe on your videos but what really matters on youtube is like the views and right now we're pulling in like two to three million views a video so um things are going uh, pretty well uh, it, it's going pretty well and, and basically what we try what we try and do is just um keep that going but at a consistent rate when we can when we can um but yeah no uh, all, all we try and do is just um, grow the channel as time goes on probably waffling now so, um, so he's been growing the channel for seven years um, yeah. so yeah so talk us, talk us through then Nico if you would if you, you've been doing it for seven years um, it's five years since you left college which means you started two years before that yeah so I'll take all the credit for the channel yeah no no it was all you James honestly all me 
Yeah, and anybody watching this who wants to be a famous YouTuber, just talk to me, obviously. Go to, yeah. Go to yeah. James. Yeah. James will tell you exactly how to do it. He's got yeah. all the experience. <laughs> None of the experience. So what, what did you do to start with? How did what you did originally change to what you do now? Or did it change? Like, what's, yeah. what would you say the process of it has been? When I first started making videos, I was making uh, videos back in school, so it was just like little skits on my phone and stuff, um, where I do stupid stuff like the effect where there's two of me in one room, I did some dodgy little cut in the middle of the room uh, and just talked to myself. But then as time went on, I started putting more effort into the videos. Me going to Stafford College, um, uh, it put, put it more into practice. So um, what I'd learned in Stafford College, I'd end up putting in videos um, myself uh, but at this point I was still making type of more more type of like skit type videos um and then when uh, after I left Zappa College and me and George started working together we more went more instead of skits uh, with with planning and scripts behind it we just went let's just build stories where more, in a more documentary type style but um yeah it's, it's definitely built over time um and it's it's been based off what my audience has been um, has been saying or what people have reacted well to. Um, and then that's, uh, that's where it's now reached the point where we're at now, where every video is just a different story, which, whichever, whatever we can create out of the world which we live in. So I think a lot of, from when I talk with people who are watching your videos online, I think like as a media teacher, like I, I fully appreciate what goes in behind the scenes of working on a production, but I think quite often to an audience, they kind of, they'll watch a video on YouTube and be like, oh, I can totally do that. And they just think it's a matter, they don't even think that somebody's filming it, one. Yeah. And they've become so disconnected with being the, being the observer on YouTube. Um, and they don't really think much planning's gone in. They just think, oh, look, look at what that person did while they were there. They just casually decided to pull that prank. So how much... How much goes in in the in the build up to to video that you're making? Like, how long do you tend to work on a production for? I think well, George. Yeah, well, I, I think it, it depends. Each video is different um, for preparation. We've had videos where we've done like one sit down day of planning and then filmed it the next day and then edited it. And it's taken it's taken a short amount of time. But then with other projects, say we we travel um, or there's a big event that we go to. There's a lot of planning that starts sometimes months in advance that you try and you try and do little things at the start and then more planning more planning then the big event goes on you film it and then you try and make it like um like a bigger project so yeah it, it really depends on video to video um our last video we did for example it took us five days to film it because of things that were going wrong like going wrong in the filming process but then like a couple a video we did you know, a couple months ago, before that, um, would take one day. It's, it's very strange. It depends on it depends on the type of video you try and do. Okay. And in terms of your success, most successful videos, which one has cost you the most to make and was successful, and which one cost you the least to make and was successful? And only if you're willing to share it, how much did you spend as a maximum and, and the same as a minimum? Okay. Well, the, the, Nico, the least, the least one has to be the McDonald's video. Has to be. Because we, as in, as in yeah, what we exactly. spent on the McDonald's video was very, very little. But the, the, the response from that video has done the best on the channel. Crazy yeah. enough. No, uh, in that video, basically, we got a speaker and we put like a GoPro on top of the speaker and my phone. And we just literally spoke, on to um, spoke to the people who were going through the drive through um, and just and chatted to them so it literally cost us nothing to make because we used george's dodgy speaker and um nothing wrong with my speaker, <laughs> nothing wrong with my speaker. And, uh, and, and then we posted it to youtube um and yeah it's about to hit 10 million views so yeah i definitely say that's the um the cheapest um, cheapest to make and then in terms of profit it's got 10 million views so it's it's done it's done reasonably well uh, uh money wise but then i'm just trying to think um recently we went to Miami um, to sneak into a YouTube fight. Um, so uh, me, that was me and George, we had to get a place in Miami as well. Um, so we, we ended up spending, it was, it was like three, 4K, which we spent on the video. Had to get like a disguise, a full on disguise, because I was banned from this event uh, for sneaking in um, to one in LA. 
Um, and yeah, and, but then that one did well as well. Cause like where, with this stuff, it's always calculated risk. So it's like, uh, um, there was a fight which was going to be the biggest event on YouTube at the time where a YouTuber called Jake Paul fought a YouTuber called Anis and Gibb. And we knew um, on my channel at that, at that time, all my biggest hitters were sneaking into these fights. So we were like, okay, let's sneak into this final one and let's see what, um, see what we can do. So we, we spent 4K, but it was like, it makes sense. And that's what the audience really wanted to see. And, and how many views has that had? That has 5.6 million at this current point in time. Wow. So to put that into perspective, right, there's like 70 million households in the UK and you had 10 million views on the McDonald's video. So that's like one in seven households. Yeah. If we were just, like, we're obviously looking globally, but to put it into yeah. perspective of the UK, which is like England, Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland, mm -hmm. that's, that's pretty huge, right? That's that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's nuts. But that, that, that's also nuts about it. Like, you, we only like put the work into the videos and then we post it. We don't see the people behind the screen. Like if we head out in, into public, then yeah, maybe we'll get recognized. But if you put 2 million people out on the streets, it's a heart, it's tons and tons of people, but we never, we never really see it that way. Um, Cause it's, it's very difficult to put faces to numbers. So like, yeah. to actually visualize that many people is, is pretty crazy. Yeah. There's numbers on the screen. It's a big deal. So when you guys go out in public, is it, are you recognized by people? Or do you just casually go about your day to day? I hate, I hate going into public with Nico because he's <laughs> recognized a fair bit, a fair bit. <laughs> um, and I'm not the biggest fan of being recognized. So <laughs> he's had awful situations where he's been on the, on the train or, or something with his family. And he oh, hates yeah. it. <laughs> he hates it. I was in Stafford once, James, and I was in um, I was in one of the Weatherspoons, uh, the Weatherspoons, um, with my entire family for a family event, and this kid and his mum came up to me and was like, "Are you George?" And I was just, just like, "This is awful. I hate it." Because my whole family were behind me watching. And I was just like, "Ah, oh, I don't like this." <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah. So yes, it does happen. <laughs> yeah. But on, on the whole, and on, on the whole, it is. Um, it's nice when people come up and yeah, and yeah. Um, but the issue is when they come to our house. So like, they come to our people will come to our house daily, um, and um, we we recently moved, so it, it stopped until we posted our, our our most recent video. And I think at some point people have clocked where we live in this video because now not like two 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 sets of people a day are now coming to the front door just um, ringing their doorbell. Yeah. Wow. In a, in a pandemic, <laughs> it's nuts. <laughs> it's nuts. Yeah, so you're gonna need a studio house next, then, right? Just like a house just to casually make your videos in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, exactly. Wow. Okay, that's um. Did you did either of you ever see it getting to this point, or did either of you ever want it to get to this point where you'd got so many views and so many subscribers? I, 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 go on, you go, Nick. You go. Well, no, you go, you go, go on. No, I was just going to say, well, I, I joined you when you were on about 120 k yeah. And um, I literally joined as a summer job because I originally went to university and then felt uni wasn't for me. Um, and I, jo I joined for like a summer just to see what was going on. I didn't really vision that far into the future. I was just going to see, see what I could do, what I'd enjoy. And then I might go back to uni. I might not really enjoyed it. And then... Yeah, I don't know. I didn't really have the, the vision of it being this this thing that it's been, but um, the man right there has taken it that far. Um, and I'm assuming you hoped to have that vision from when he was starting, so I'm assuming you did. No, what well, with, with me, like, it was always my dream to be, like, a, a YouTuber um, from when I was, like, 12, 13, so I used to watch it in a, in a way of just, like, ah, oh, this is what I want to be doing, and I, I ended up... Um, uh, just making these videos but um in in terms of like re reaching this point I, I i would have never imagined reaching uh reaching the point which um me and george have managed to reach from um from the channel but it is ma massively um, um with george with george as well because uh, the the reason we can make the types of videos which we're making now is because it is it's literally two people going on adventures together the only difference is i'm the one in front of the camera and george is the one behind the camera 
Um, but yeah, no, never would have imagined it to reach this point. Um, and uh, I think if I was younger now looking at you and you told me, I wouldn't have believed you. Yeah, that's really good to hear. Do you see yourselves as being successful at this point? Or do you find that with the nature of YouTube that you're always comparing yourself to somebody that's got, you know, 5 million subs or 10 million subs? You want to I, I, funny thing is, I see the success in Nico quite, because it's a, very much a part, like a, a two-way thing, both of us to get in together. But I always view Nico as he's successful and he's done very well. But I know Nico and I know he's like, it could be more, could be more. <laughs> you always like, could be, could be this, 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 which is great. So, yeah. Yeah, I, it, it's tough. So we, you can look at, so we do, we're doing well, like numbers wise and stuff, but um, one got, thing which we've never managed to achieve is being like uh, uploading on a completely like weekly schedule. So um, if you said, um, we're, I still always will comp compare um, what we're doing to people who are getting more numbers and like, how can we reach that level? But at the same time, I think when we hit those milestones of like 2 million, those are the, time, the times when you could be like, okay, wow, we've actually managed to do a good, a good thing here. We've, we've, um, that's a good achievement. But um, yeah, we are always, uh, uh, especially me, I'm always just sort of like, nah, it's not enough, which could be damaging, I guess. That's, that's the route to what I, what I believe one of the routes to why it has, it has been so successful. Because if you hit a million and we're like, oh, okay, I'm done. Or like, no, I'm done, but oh, okay, I've done, I've done a million now. This is great. And you just sit back. Yeah. And maybe you, maybe you wouldn't be any, you, you wouldn't be where you are now. So it's always going to you never said that to me. Oh, my yeah. heart feels heart warm. Moment. Heart felt moment. <laughs> yeah. so. It's good though. It's, it's good to have that drive and that ambition because with what you're saying, George, like Nico, you could have been like, oh, I just want to hit a thousand followers and then I'll top out and I'm done. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, you, you hit that years and years ago and then could have gone, oh, that's, that's all I wanted to do. You know, so yeah. it's, it's definitely really important, I think, to have that drive and, and to keep striving. So um, my, ne my next question is, what unexpected things have come from becoming a YouTuber, like unexpected opportunities? Or like, um, for example, like when you started out as quite young looking at YouTube and going, I, I, I want to be like those YouTubers. Did you ever think about like the, the commercial contracts that come off the back of it and those sort of things? So can you talk to us a bit about like, those aspects? And yeah. If you're funny, that's fine, just tell me. Yeah. No, 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 um, no definitely. We, um... It's been it's been pretty wild since um since me and George start, started working together because just before uh, me and George started working together um we I, I made like an EDL video and, and from there I had tons of like um, TV offers where people wanted me to do, do that type of um, um, documentary type of style where I, I turn up at places um, and and then we started working together and we continued making those style uh, style of videos me and George have been in like um. Channel Four meetings, uh, Channel Four meeting where they're offering our series, and we're ending up declining um, the declining series because we're looking at YouTube more uh, like as there's more views on YouTube than there is on TV. Like uh, we're looking at YouTube as more of a opportunity to to grow ourselves. Like we we um, uh, we definitely think that the best way to go, at least for now, is on that on that YouTube road. Um, but yeah, no, um, it, it's been very, um, it's been very interesting when, uh, because five years ago or whatever, if you said your TV show, that's what we, we were like, oh, of course, a hundred percent. But because of the position which we're in, we're now sort of um, saying no to, the, uh, to those sort of deals. And I think when you really deep that, um, I think it's mental. Yeah, that's, that's definitely a big shout from, from what I would have thought as well five years ago. Like compared to watching watching you guys grow and, and seeing the success that you go through, like when you guys were in college, it would have been like take any opportunity you can to get into TV. Yeah. But like yeah. that's TV desperate to sort of pull off for YouTube success as opposed to you know vice versa, people jumping on TV to try and grow the channel. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Turned on its head, right? Wow. Um, it's hard about okay. it's hard about changes, really, isn't it? Like because obviously YouTube is becoming online like streaming services are uh, becoming more of a popularity i guess 
Yeah. So we always look into that more now, I think. And 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 to be fair, like um the the houses which we're in as well, like that it's all from um pitches which we've done to like YouTube networks and stuff who who will invest in us by putting us in houses and stuff. So like um and the, that's more of the opportunities which we've managed to get solely from from the youtube channel as well so can you tell us a bit about that then um so like the house you're in who you live with how that's all worked out where you know those guys from and that sort of stuff um so we live with um, um some of our friends um who are also youtubers entertainers like one's called Sh chunks one's called sharky aj another youtuber called king kenny tv and basically what we did, we just pitched to a, um, a YouTube network um, and like ma slash management company uh, and said, yeah, we'll, we'll sign exclusive under your network if you put us into a, um, a house. Um, and they were like, yeah, okay, we'll do it. And then they ended up putting us into a house and um, funding a, a channel which we, we uploaded videos on uh, called The Beta Squad. And uh, yeah, and from there, so that, that for the past year, um, we we had to move out because the first one um, got sold. Well, um, they were telling us it got sold, and then now this one's getting sold. And only now we're now gonna like, we're now like okay, we're gonna get our own place now. But uh, yeah, the they funded the they funded the channel. That they funded the um, the houses which we've been in. Yeah, so that uh, and. Like originally when we first moved out, we would have never been able to afford like these types of places. So um, it was a massive opportunity when we first moved in. It was very, very surreal. So, so you guys are kind of operating as a collaborative at the same time as doing your own things? Or is it very much now just a collaborative and your own things take a seat on the back burner? What is that dynamic fit? I, th I think l last year it was um, the collaborative aspect was priority um like i remember i spent like a ridiculous amount of time on the on the collaborative project but now um uh when when it comes to like the whole house everyone's just focusing on themselves me and george are just focusing on on our channel on the nick omelana channel cool so um for both of you at this point and um, individually if you could take this what what advice would you give to yourself when you were in year 10 or 11 of high school what advice would you give yourself? I hate that question because I have no idea. <laughs> um, Nick, are you going to have to go first? <laughs> okay, all right. Um, what advice would I give that is a, That's a tricky one. Um, yeah, stick, I think stick at it. Stick at um, – because year, year 10 is when I started my channel. And I think when you first start these things, um, uh, especially when you're not getting any views or anything like that, you're putting yourself at a lot of scrutiny towards your friends and it's very easy i think to stop and i think a lot of people have stopped through embarrassment or whatever but if it's something which you really want to do then there's no reason why you should ever stop um and you don't know how many opportunities it can give you like um you don't need to be successful on youtube for um, um opportunities to come from it because at the end of the day you're still building a whole portfolio which can be used for many many other things as well like you, you could send that to um, someone like like the BBC and they might see you as an up and coming talent and then just decide to sign you up right there and then like there's tons of stuff and if worst, worst comes to worst you're still getting better at whatever you're you're doing like the the progress which I made from making videos for like seven years I've got better at it like for each video each video I, I know what I'm doing more and more so I'd say stick, stick at it that, that would be my advice to myself um, in year 10 what age is that like 14 yeah, 14, 15, yeah. Yeah. Oh, good advice, Nicky. Eh? How about you, George? Um, it's slightly different for me because obviously Nico is has been doing this for so long. I was never I was never involved seven years ago when he was doing it. Um but one of the things it wasn't it was actually a little bit after year 10, 11, but one of the things I was um uh I'd struggle to do is like uh take a chance on something. So if I basically when Nico was speaking to me about this and the, bringing a project in together for both of us, um, it was a very, um, like, it wasn't, it wasn't a secure guarantee that everything was going to work out this way. But I think myself, I took a chance, took a chance on something I saw that was going to go well. Like I, I envisioned it and knew what I was capable of, knew what he was capable of. I thought, oh, two people together can 
bring it to that level. So, for, yeah, for me, taking a chance was quite a, quite an important thing I did because I was, uh, like I said, it wasn't it was it wasn't in high school, but I was in a first year course at university where I felt like I was not really doing too much, um, and the decision to leave university was huge. And at mo- like ninety nine percent of the people in my life at that time said to me, "You shouldn't really do it because it's not it's not a secure it's not a secure job." Um, but I'm I convinced myself to take the chance and uh, work on it, and it's worked it worked really well for me. So I think if you see the opportunity, if you see an opportunity for something, um, you should like it's sort of what Nick has said, but you just got to stick at it and like go for it. I think. Thank God um, you did. Huh? Thank God you went for it. Oh my yeah, God. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I've actually, I've actually never. Um... I, I, I honestly, I honestly believe hand on heart. If I didn't, and I was kind of just played it safe, and I was like, nah, I'm gonna stick at uni. I would have technically, I think, finished university now. But I'd probably be nowhere. I, I, I don't think I had the right motivation and right mindset in university to continue. But I saw my mindset um, changing or wanting to change when Nico gave me the opportunity to work with it. So I think, I, jump I, I, I think no matter what, you'd be successful. But yeah, may, potentially, maybe. But um, I don't think I would have had the motivation. Because I saw my, I saw something, I saw more more motivation in something else. So yeah, I had to go with that, which is which was which was the channel. I knew yeah. so. But no, thank God you did. Thank God you did. <laughs> for my sake, for my sake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the two of you guys work really well together. And uh, from from what I've seen, like when I'm at, when I'm up with you guys at Christmas and talking with you guys today. I see, I see you, Nico, is like really humble and really grateful for everything George offers, and George equally the the same way, you know, which is which is really important, and it's it's really nice to see. Without without sounding too cringe, without sounding too cringe, we've definitely both changed each other's lives for the better. In, yeah, hundred percent, completely. And it, and James, it all happened because of you. And, and you brought us together, James. You brought us together. <laughs> I was just in the same room. No, no, but yeah, but, but like I, with me, I I applied for Stafford College like past the point where I should have applied, and you accepted me into the course. If you just said, if you were like, oh, and you were going to Stoke, was it Stoke your granddad took you off to? Yeah, you? yeah. So it's, it was either Stoke or Stafford College, but because um James here was um uh, <laughs> such, uh, I had such a warm feeling towards James. I'm not even joking. Um, that's why I was like, oh, um, it has to be, it has to be Stafford College. You, you know, I, after, go on. Yeah, no, like I, 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 I never even considered doing like a, a B Tech before. So when I was, I was going to go to Stoke to do um, like A level slash B Tech, but I just thought it has to be Stafford College, and then that changed my life equally. James, you were the birth of the, all of this. That's what that's what it is. Thanks, guys. Appreciate that. Um, <laughs> you know, after we actually met that day, and I met you, and I met your granddad. I went back up to the offices, and I was talking to talking to one of the other staff, and I was like, "I've just met this kid, man. He's making videos and stuff. He'd be really good on the course. But he's going to Stoke to go and talk to him about doing an A level. Like, I'm going to be fuming if he doesn't come on this course. I'm going to be no absolutely way. joking. To Stoke. No, no, seriously. No way. Oh my yeah, god. Okay, yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's nuts. That is. Oh wow. Worked well. Um, don't really think I've got any other questions, but I have got one more request, which is what I've done with other people I've interviewed. I've just done like a screen grab um, of this so that I can use it as like the title card when the video goes out. So can I get you guys into the same room? And yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Picture. Do you want to get, who's get, got, get, who's get got the better camera? lighting? Who's got the better camera? Oh, uh, your lighting's definitely brighter, Nico. Okay, come to me, George. I've got, can, you I've got your, uh, can you get your YouTube plaque? Can you get that in there? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Which one? The 1 million or the 100K? Uh, <laughs> get, both. get both, yeah. And then you can argue over who holds which. <laughs> uh, oh, he keeps the 100K. I keep this one in my room. Uh, when we first started working together, because I'd, I'd already I'd already got that when we first started working together, and I used to give it to him to look into the into the reflection <laughs> to see my achievement. Yeah, I think it's because of this this thing. Isn't it? Yeah, you're gonna have to watch out for glare a little bit. Can you can you hold it up a little bit and angle it that way a bit? 
Yeah, that that kind of works at that angle. George, you go angle yours more towards. Not that. Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm, I'm gonna see if I can kick you out of the um video chat. It's stop video there. Is that gonna oh, get really? Oh yeah, I should. Oh no, no that didn't work. Oh. See, that one might be better because oh. it's smaller. I'm just remo I'm just removing you, so it just goes to a two split, okay? Um, and then I'm gonna very awkwardly because I'm right-handed. Hold hold yours up for me, George. That's good. And I'm gonna point that way. And I will go three, two, one. Is it working out good for you guys? Like, because uh, people have got more time, are you getting more views? Or, um, well, yeah, I think the views the views have gone up, but the issue is with with the stuff which we we love leaving. Like, we don't like making videos solely based in the house. So we made a couple of videos where we didn't really leave the house much, but um, it wasn't really satisfying us creatively because um, what we like doing is building like a whole story around something. So um, we kind of waited for it to die, like for it to ease up a little bit. And then recently we did a video where we uh, built a whole narrative around a pizza delivery driver. So they're coming to the house and then we ended up surprising him with like a, like a 2000 pound tip. Um, so um, yeah, so, but we, we, we ended up stopping for like two months. So it's it only recently now we're, we're, we're getting back making stuff again. Getting back up. And have you got yeah. plenty of ideas in the pipeline? Or is it literally just like wait for one, get it done, and then move on to the next one? So there's plenty of ideas in the pipeline, but then the issue is, is then like, okay, which idea do we do? And we dilly-dally too much. We like, after we finish a video, we're like, do we do this one? Does this one make sense to do anymore? And, and it's like, it, it, it doesn't really make sense. I think what we need to do more is just, just do it. Just do it. They're like, take no time to even think about it and just do it. Yeah. Do you ever hold on releases? Do you ever make stuff and then just like bank it for a while and then wait for the, the moment to release that video? One video. Yeah, and that, that was, you know, yeah, there was only one video where we decided to do that and that was where we pranked our friend. Um, uh, but he, he didn't want us to upload it. So that's why we banked on it. We, we, we just didn't post it for like, um, like four months after. And then he was like, you know, okay, he, he's calm for it to go up, out. But um, apart from that, you know, usually we post it. Usually we're behind time. So it's like the moment it's done, okay, post it now. And then it's like, okay, we start again. We're, I think right now we're at the point where we've realized we need to get more people involved um, because the amount of stuff which we're doing, it, it doesn't make sense for a team of two to do. So like just, just today, actually, just a couple of hours ago, I spoke to um, someone who I'm interested in being like a, produ like a producer type role, someone who I can bounce off of um, with ideas and to help me plan stuff. Um, and, jo and George has got the, um, the editing stuff on lock, but we've also um, looked into hiring someone to, ha um, to help George cut down the stuff. And then he, he just does the, the masterpiece. Yeah, and then, and then you can up your quantity by getting a bit more. Exactly, exactly. That, that, that's the aim, that's the aim. It's just like, but because we're only just like looking into the, um, like, we we never came up through the industry. We're just sort of like discovering it now. I I I've never really known how to like uh, interview someone. I've like the way I've done it before is I knew George was good from Stafford College, and we were good friends. So that's how we came to that conclusion. Yeah, that's really cool though, man. Thank you so much for doing this interview today with us. Um, anytime, anytime, honestly. Yeah, Wicked. I I might hold you to that and do a random quiz. <laughs> okay. at some point <laughs> next okay. time next time add us to a call of like 20 students out of nowhere and we're just like we all oh, panic yeah yeah, yeah. Into it. Um, I our public speaking skills I, think. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that careers talk and that it's opened your eyes to another career in this vast industry there's more talks on our channel and we're adding to them all the time so whilst you're here why not hit the subscribe button and don't forget to like this video we'll see you soon